Hey folks, in today's conundrum we will cover the case of Herman Webster Mudgett, also known as Dr. Henry Howard Holmes, or H.H. H. Holmes, an American con artist and serial killer. He committed various crimes such as insurance fraud, swindling, check forging, bigamy, horse theft, and murder. Although he confessed to 27 murders, including some people who were still alive, he was convicted and sentenced to death for the murder of his accomplice, Benjamin Pitizel. Holmes was executed on May 7, 1896. Many of the stories about his infamous murder castle and alleged crimes are likely exaggerated or fabricated for sensationalism. Holmes was known for giving contradictory accounts of his life, making it difficult to discern the truth from his statements. While some consider him a serial killer, his murders were often motivated by self-preservation and furthering his fraudulent activities rather than a desire for bloodshed. Welcome back to Conundrum, where we delve into the minds and history of serial killers. If you like this type of content, please like, subscribe and put the notification bell on so you don't miss any of my future uploads. Thank you for being here. H.H. H. Holmes, born Herman Webster Mudgett, was born in Gilmanton, New Hampshire, on May 16, 1861, to Levi Horton Mudgett and Theodate Page Price. He was the third child in the family, with older siblings Ellen and Arthur, as well as younger siblings Mary and Henry. His father worked as a farmer, trader, and house painter, while his parents were devout Methodists. Despite attempts to associate him with characteristics common among serial killers, such as animal cruelty and a violent upbringing, there is no concrete evidence from contemporary sources to support these claims. In 1878, Holmes married Clara Lovering, and they had a son named Robert. Holmes attended the University of Vermont, but left after a year due to dissatisfaction. He then enrolled in the University of Michigan's Department of Medicine and Surgery, graduating in 1884. During his time there, he allegedly participated in grave robbing for medical cadavers under Professor William James Herdman, whom he worked with in the anatomy lab. Holmes had previous experience in human dissection under Nahum White in New Hampshire, and later confessed to using cadavers for insurance fraud during his college years. Holmes had a tumultuous relationship with Clara, and she moved back to New Hampshire in 1884, knowing little about him afterward. Rumors circulated in Moore's Forks, New York, regarding Holmes' association with a missing boy, but no investigation took place, and Holmes swiftly left the town. He found employment at Norristown State Hospital in Philadelphia, but quit shortly after and took a job at a drugstore. However, a child died after consuming medicine from the store, leading Holmes to deny involvement and immediately leave the city. Before moving to Chicago, he changed his name to Henry Howard Holmes to evade potential exposure from previous scams. In his confession, Holmes claimed to have killed his former medical school classmate, Robert Leacock, in 1886 for insurance money. However, Leacock was found to have died in Canada in 1889. In late 1886, while still married to Clara, Holmes married Murda Belknap in Minneapolis. He filed for divorce from Clara, but the proceedings went nowhere. Holmes had a daughter named Lucy with Murda, born in 1889. Holmes lived with Murda and Lucy in Wilmette, Illinois, while spending most of his time in Chicago for business. He married Georgiana Yoke in 1894, despite still being married to both Clara and Murda. H. H. Holmes's castle, located near the Englewood Post Office in Illinois, captivated the public's imagination. Although often depicted as a nightmarish structure with hidden horrors, the truth is more mundane. Holmes arrived in Chicago in 1886 and purchased a drugstore from Elizabeth S. Holton. He later acquired an adjacent lot, constructing a two-story building with retail spaces and apartments. Holmes expanded it with a third floor, envisioning a hotel for the World's Columbian Exposition. Contrary to popular tales, there is no evidence that Holmes targeted strangers visiting the World's Fair. His victims were mostly people he knew. While Holmes did have a history of selling cadavers to medical schools, he obtained them through grave robbing, not by murdering tourists. The sensationalized reports of secret chambers, gas chambers, and a basement crematorium in the murder castle were unfounded. 
The reality was a more conventional hotel layout, albeit with some hidden rooms. An unknown arsonist set fire to the hotel, leading to its partial destruction. It was later rebuilt and used as a post office until 1938. In addition to the castle, Holmes also had a one-story factory, allegedly for glass bending. Speculation suggests the furnace may have been used to destroy evidence related to his crimes. H. H. Holmes had several early victims. One of them was his mistress, Julia Smythe, who disappeared along with her daughter Pearl. Holmes claimed that Julia died during an abortion and that he poisoned Pearl to hide the truth. Emmeline Sigrande and Emily Van Tassel, who both worked for Holmes, also vanished. While working in the chemical bank building on Dearborn Street, Holmes met and became close friends with Benjamin Pitizel, whom he used for criminal activities. Holmes convinced Minnie Williams to transfer her property to him and later rented an apartment with her, posing as husband and wife. Minnie and her sister Annie disappeared. Holmes was suspected of killing six other individuals who went missing between 1891 and 1895. There are theories linking Holmes to Jack the Ripper based on similarities in their activities and physical descriptions. Holmes's activities in the U.S. are well documented, except for a short span of time between July 1888 and the beginning of 1889, during which he seems to have virtually disappeared. Jack the Ripper's murder spree took place from August to November 1888. Not long after Jack the Ripper's final victim, Mary Kelly, was eviscerated, a ship's log in England revealed that a passenger named H. Holmes booked passage for America. Holmes attempted insurance fraud by faking his own death, and later convinced Pitazel to do the same. Instead, Holmes killed Pitazel and collected the insurance payout. He took custody of three of Pitazel's children and traveled across the United States and Canada. He murdered two of the children by asphyxiating them in a trunk. The bodies of the Pitazel girls were found in a cellar in Toronto. Detective Frank Geyer discovered the decomposed bodies and also found evidence of Holmes's crimes in Indianapolis. Holmes's murder spree finally ended when he was arrested in Boston on November 17, 1894, after being tracked there from Philadelphia by the private Pinkerton National Detective Agency. After his arrest, H. H. Holmes faced a trial for the murder of Benjamin Pitazel. The investigation into his building in Englewood, known as the Castle, yielded no conclusive evidence to convict him in Chicago. However, in October 1895, Holmes was found guilty of Pitazel's murder and sentenced to death. His confessions were deemed mostly nonsensical. On May 7, 1896, Holmes was hanged at Moya Mensing Prison for Pitazel's murder. Despite his calm demeanor, he requested to be buried in a coffin encased in cement, fearing grave robbers. Holmes died from strangulation, twitching for over 15 minutes before being declared dead. He was buried in an unmarked grave at Holy Cross Cemetery in Yadin, Pennsylvania. In 1909, one of Holmes's informants, Hedgepeth, was shot and killed by a police officer during a holdup. The mysteries surrounding Holmes's castle remained unsolved even after the death of Patrick Quinlan, the former caretaker, who committed suicide in 1914. The castle itself, as I mentioned earlier, was destroyed by a mysterious fire in August 1895. Two men were seen entering and quickly leaving the building before explosions occurred, leading to its complete destruction. The site was later occupied by a postal service branch. In 2017, Holmes's body was exhumed for testing, which confirmed his identity. Despite being buried in cement, his body had not decomposed normally, and his clothes and mustache were remarkably well preserved. After identification, Holmes was reburied. In conclusion, H. H. Holmes stands as one of America's first notorious serial killers. His heinous actions and manipulations showcase the depths of human evil. It is important to remember and honor the victims who suffered at his hands, acknowledging their tragic fate. While you are here, check some of my other videos if you like this. I am Alex and this is Conundrum. Stay curious and stay safe.